Welcome back to Askewed Reviews, and since it's still Shark Week, we are going to be doing the 1987 horror adventure thriller, Jaws the Revenge. Here is your trivia question for today. What is the name of the ship used at the end of the film? The answer will be at the end of this video. So this time around, we start back at Amity Island, where it has been some amount of time and now Sean Brody is part of the police department as he is a deputy. Right before heading home, Sean is told that there's a large piece of driftwood out in the water that he needs to go and move. Sean and his ship are unfortunately attacked by a shark and brought down into the depths. Mike Brody, his wife Carla, and their daughter Thea come to visit Ellen and make an appearance for the funeral. The three of them manage to convince Ellen that it's time to leave Amity and come move down with them in the Bahamas. On their way down, they take a seaplane where they meet a nice gentleman named Hoagie who becomes friends with Ellen. Now, for the most part, things start to go pretty well in the Bahamas. Ellen and Hoagie start to develop a bit of a relationship. Thea gets to hang out with her grandmother. Carla spends time finalizing her art sculpture. And Mike and his partner Jake are working on advancements in marine biology. And then, out of nowhere, a shark comes and attacks Mike. And guess what? It's the same shark from New England. Also, in one of the weirdest plot choices, Ellen somehow has some weird telepathic connection to this shark. Apparently, the final straw is when the shark almost gets Thea. This enrages Ellen, who either sets sail off by herself to either give herself to the shark or possibly take the shark on by herself. Luckily for her, though, Hoagie, Mike, and Jake all appear in time to help her out. Will our unlikely band of heroes be able to take on that shark? Joseph Sargent was the director for this film. He also agrees that unfortunately it wasn't all that good of a movie, mainly due to the fact that he felt very rushed to get it out in time for summer of 1987. The biggest reason for that is Universal had a huge summer flop the previous year with the movie Howard the Duck. The movie primarily takes place and is filmed in the Bahamas. The movie also takes place during Christmas slash New Year's Eve, which makes it the first Jaws movie to not happen during the summer. Unfortunately, this film was really just doomed from the beginning. I mean, look at that tagline. This time, it's personal. Personal how? Is it personal for the shark? Because, well, that can't happen because this is a completely different shark because the other ones have died. Or is it personal for Ellen Brody because this is the first time the shark has actually killed one of the Brodies? Michael Caine even refers to this movie as just one of his paycheck movies. He even did it mainly due to the fact that he just wanted to film in the Bahamas. The character of Hoagie was even going to have a weird subplot at one point where he was also drug smuggling. I'm really glad they didn't include that. The weirdest dropped plot that they actually had for this film was the original idea was that Mike Brody was somehow going to piss off a local voodoo priest and he was going to curse Brody and his family and that's actually why the shark is hunting them all down. There was even a really dark concept of having the priest hypnotize Thea into sleepwalking to the end of the dock right into the shark. Although that plot line is nowhere near as dark as what actually happened to actress Judith Barcy, who played Thea. In fact, she was murdered at the age of 10. If you have time and are willing to look into a very dark story, go ahead and look into that. Lance Guest, who plays Mike Brody in the film, actually appeared as a pallbearer at her funeral. Guest also seems to have been cursed by this film, as his career pretty much tanked after this, which is highly unfortunate, as prior to this movie, he was in The Last Starfighter, which really seemed like it was going to rocket his career. The script for this film was not even finished when they started filming, so Mario Van Peebles was actually allowed to write his own dialogue. Mario's father, Melvin Van Peebles, who is also a famous actor, was able to appear as the mayor of Nassau in this film. Lorraine Gary briefly came out of retirement just to do this film, and this ended up being her last acting role. I can't help but wonder if she regrets that. Roy Scheider was originally asked to come make a cameo for this film. He absolutely refused. Apparently, if he had been in the film, it was actually going to be him getting killed by the shark at the beginning and not Sean. In the original script, they actually put Matt Hooper back in as he was going to be a friend of Mike's, but Richard Dreyfuss declined. 
Murray Hamilton was asked to reprise his role as the mayor from the first two films, but before filming started, he passed away from cancer. Dennis Quaid was originally asked if he would be willing to reprise his role of Mike in this film, but he declined. Bess Armstrong, who appeared as Catherine in the third film, was also asked if she would reprise the character. When she declined, they for some reason decided to drop that character completely, and now Mike was married to Carla, played by Karen Young. Lee Fierro is one of the very few people to come back and reprise their character. She appears at Sean's funeral, and she played Mrs. Kittner, the mother whose son is killed by the shark in the first movie. Lorraine Gary, as Ellen Brody, is one of only two actors to appear in almost all of the Jaws films. She appears in the first, second, and fourth film. The other actor is Fritzy Jane Courtney, who appears as Mrs. Taft and also appears in the first, second, and fourth film. Now, Mike and Sean are the only characters to appear in every single one of the four Jaws films, and every single time, they're played by different actors. There is a possibility that the name Jaws the Revenge actually came from the original idea for the video game. The NES game was originally called Jaws the Revenge. It's not confirmed, but there is a rumor that the name of the shark for this film was Bruce, as an homage to the fact that Steven Spielberg called it Bruce in the first film. Apparently one big issue that Lorraine Gray and Michael Caine had with the last scene is it was filmed in a big tank where they actually dyed the water blue. Apparently the dye also dyed Gray and Kane's hair. When the shark is getting killed near the end of the film, it actually makes a roaring noise. Apparently that sound is actually from a Tom and Jerry cartoon called The Milky Waif. Steven Spielberg hated this sequel so much that while he was executive producer on Back to the Future Part 2, he talked Robert Zemeckis into making a joke about the fact that Jaws is going to keep making terrible sequels, and that's why you see the Jaws 19. Here's one last bit of trivia involving all of the Jaws films. They always reveal what's going to kill the shark earlier in the movie. For instance, in the first one, Hooper is telling Brody to watch out for the air tanks because they can explode. In the second film, Deputy Hendrix fishes up the power line showcasing that it exists. In the third film, there's an argument with Fitzroyce about not bringing grenades because they can be too dangerous. And finally, in the fourth film, Jake is working on a technology for a transmitter that emits high-frequency signals. And finally, the body count for this film. There's actually only two humans that die in this movie. So when it comes to Jaws the Revenge, there was just nothing good about this movie. The title, the tagline, the plot, Everything was bad, so I'm going to give this movie a 1 out of 5. Here is your trivia question for today. What is the name of the ship used at the end of the film? The ship in this movie is called Neptune's Folly, which is just so very appropriate because this movie is entirely a folly. I hope you enjoyed this episode of Askewed Reviews. If there's a movie you'd like to see get a review, just mention it in the comments. And as always, like, comment, share, and subscribe.